the mind's real home is right in the here and now. One of the most natural places for it to settle is right at the breath, because that's where the mind and the body meet. But the mind doesn't spend much time at home. It's usually off traveling around. Occasionally come back home, run through for a bit, grab a sandwich, and then head out the other door. And as a result, the home is not in good shape. When the time comes to settle down and try to stay right here, you notice it's, it's like a house that hasn't been looked after for a while, it's just filled with all kinds of junk. Things that have come into the house on their own, and things that you've brought in from all your travels. Just kind of drop them off here and run off again. Sometimes it seems very difficult to find the breath in the present moment because there are so many other thoughts and issues cluttering up the mind. And then there's the simple fact that the body often in the present moment is not all that comfortable. When you really focus on what it feels like to be here, there's tension here and there's tightness there and pain and this and other, that spot. So you have to think of the meditation, especially when you're just beginning to settle down as house cleaning. Your first reaction may be when you see the mess in the house is to want to run away again. But if you keep on running away, the mess doesn't go away. And you have to keep coming back, coming back. Especially as you get older, you find that this place where you have to stay is not in good shape, and yet you find yourself forced here more and more often. So try to develop the attitude you'd have when you realize okay, the house is a mess and you've really got to tackle it. You roll up your sleeves, put a dust mask on your face, and then get to work. The first thing is to realize that whatever thought comes into the mind while you're meditating, you don't have to get involved. A good thing to remind yourself is that, say, you suddenly remember something that somebody said a while back. All of a sudden you're tied up in what you should have said in response or why you didn't like what they said. Okay, and the pain that comes up along with that, you're actually manufacturing that pain right now. Because where's the contact? The contact of what they actually said when it made contact with your ears, that's long gone. What you've got now is the contact at the mind. And you have the choice to continue with that contact or not. And so ask yourself, why do you want to continue with it? Try to reflect on the fact that you're the one who's creating the problem right now. And it's totally arbitrary and totally unnecessary. And use that thought to help let go. And then start working with the breath. Keep in mind the fact that the breath is not just there at the nose. It's the energy field of the entire body, and it's one of the few qualities of the body that you can have some control over. You can make some adjustments. It's called the bodily fabrication, because it's the process in the body that you can use to make the rest of the body comfortable, or at least if you can't make the whole body comfortable. You give yourself a spot, an area, where it really feels good. You breathe in. Try to breathe down into the chest, down into the area of the heart. Make that refreshed. Or if there's a lot of tightness in your heart, find some place in your throat, some place in your abdomen. Any place. The closer you can get to the center of the body, this, the core of the body, the more gratifying the breath can be. Or you can think of the breath going deep, deep, deep into your head. any part of the body that you've neglected for a long time, let the breath do its work. It'll take time. Some patterns of tension have been there for a long time, and it's going to be a long time before you finally learn how to let them go. John Lee's images of rubbing your hand across a piece of wood. You pick up a little bit of the dust, and gradually over time, the wood gets glossy, but it's not going to happen right away. You have to 
rub it again and again and again. But have faith that this process really will lead to results. One of the images the Buddha uses is of a, having an adze, which is a carpenter's tool with a handle made out of wood. He says the carpenter knows that eventually the handle is going to wear out, but you don't see how much it's worn out in the course of one day. But gradually over time you begin to see the place where you grip the adze. Because your hand leaves a mark there. So working with the breath may be slow, but it's good work. And it will have its results. The important thing is that you stick with it. As you breathe in, think of the breath coming in and sweeping through the whole body. Again and again and again. It strengthens the body. Clears up this little pattern of tension, that little pattern pattern of tension, and after all you begin to realize that it gets more comfortable being here. It's easier to stay. And as for the clutter, take that attitude toward your thoughts that I recommended just now. No matter how real the original issue may have been right now, it's just in your mind. And so you have the choice of dealing with it now or sometime later. Part of the mind will say, you've got to deal with it now, this is really important. And you say, well, wait a minute, I've been sitting around all day and this particular thought hasn't come into my mind. Why is it suddenly important now? I was doing perfectly fine without it. In other words, learn how to argue with the mind's tendency to grab more stuff to clutter itself up. This way, as you work through the junk in the house here, you find at the very least you've got a corner where you can stay. And over time, that corner gets larger and larger. And you begin to reclaim this place as a place where you really do want to stay. But it does take care, and it does take skill. You can't just force yourself here into the present moment and expect the mind to be obedient. If there's no pleasure at all in staying here, it's going to find the fastest way out that it can find. So think of the breath energy sweeping through the body, cleaning things up. And developing the right attitude toward the thoughts that clutter up the mind. Sometimes simply recognizing that this is mental clutter, that's enough for you to drop it. It'll go away, at least for the time being. Other times you have to actively argue with it. Remind yourself of the drawbacks, a lot of the thinking that you get engaged in. If some thoughts are stubborn, you can be stubborn too. They can be chattering away in one corner, but you've got another corner. You go to your corner. Just stay with the breath. And when you don't get engaged in the chatter, it begins to get weaker and weaker, and finally it just dissipates. And as your awareness of the breath gets more subtle, you can begin to see the thoughts as they begin to gather. It's just a stirring in the energy, and it's right at the border of, between the mind and the body. Then you have the choice of seeing it as just as a bodily stirring or as a mental stirring. It's like when you're working at the computer. You can push a key, or you can push the control and then the key, and it's something else entirely. So try to keep it on the physical level. I mean, as soon as you see any perceptions coming up to say, this is a thought about that, this is a thought about this, you breathe right through them. And breathe through whatever stirring there is right there. And you can nip the thought in the bud. This way, as you clean things out, you find that this home here in the present moment really becomes a home. It's not just a house. It's your real home where you can stay 
You can rest when you need to rest. If you have work you need to do, you can do it right here. Because what's your work with? Figuring out how the mind causes itself unnecessary stress and suffering. When you're rested, you can do this work. When the work gets tiring, you can just go back and rest again. This home we have right here has many rooms. And the shelter it provides can give you shelter for, for all your skillful activities. And begin to realize this is a really good place to stay. Even as the body gets sick, you can make the present moment a good place to stay. Use the work to clean things out as much as you can, and then work on your attitude, reminding yourself that this is just a temporary home. You'll have to leave it someday. It's not who you really are. It's something you use while you can, and then you have to put it aside, which may seem threatening, because then the question is, where do you go next? Well, you, you don't have to worry about that. As long as you've been doing good things in your life, you go to a good place. And where do the good things come from? They come from a mind that's well rested, a mind that has a good sense of well-being here in the present moment. So when you're working on the present here, you're helping to get the future covered as well. So survey the house here. In some cases it may need nothing more than just a little dusting. In other cases you have to pull things out. There are rats' nests and who knows what else in here sometimes. So you pull everything out, clean things out. It can be a major housekeeping project. But either way, it's good work. And if you don't do the work here, where else are you going to live during this lifetime? This is your home base. You're here in the present moment much more often than you're in your physical home. Because this is where you are wherever you go. The problem is the mind doesn't fully stay here. It's off wandering around someplace else and not looking after the home that it has to keep coming back to. So it takes some time. Realize it's going to be work, but it's not work all the time. It's work simply as you're cleaning things out, in the same way when you have to do a major house cleaning. It's not that you constantly have to do a major house cleaning every day. It's every now and then, especially as you're moving back in. Once you're settled in, then the, then the jobs get lighter and lighter, and the opportunity for rest and the opportunity for doing the kind, the kind of work you really want to do, which is to understand the mind, it grows more and more. 